Hello, it's Sailor the Yoker for Life here. Um, this video is going to be about my experience with ADHD. So, a lot of you don't know this, and maybe you've possibly noticed it in my videos if you uh, watch a lot of, especially my talking videos, how talkative I am. Um, and how I always move my hands around and talk with my hands a lot and then get off subject and then have to freeze and say, um, uh, and, uh, just, just look like my thoughts because they're going a million miles a minute in every direction. So, uh, yeah, that is all because I have severe ADHD. I have had ADHD since I was born, basically. Uh, I mean, I was born with it. Uh, we think my dad had it, but they never diagnosed it. Um, because, you know, way back then, they didn't know as much as they do now. So when I was a kid, they diagnosed it. I was put on medicine. I stayed on medicine from T1, transition first grade, which they made my parents put me through. Um, they would let, not let me go on to first grade from kindergarten. Uh, they forced my parents to have put let them put me through the transition first grade program, um, which technically it's like getting held back, but it's not. It's transitioning to first grade, so they're getting you ready for first grade. So there's no naps. Um, you get a little bit of grading, um, like grades and stuff and homework, um, just a little bit. Um, they're just preparing you for first grade. Um, so it's not necessarily being held back or repeating a grade because there's no repeat. It's just preparing you, um, which honestly, I never regretted them doing that. Um, I know my parents were a little mad about doing it, but um, I, I don't regret it because I feel like by the time knowing every single year going forward, I was not with the kids I was supposed to be with. Um, the, the kids that I grew up with up into kindergarten um, and continue to go to the babysitter with um, even, um, I was supposed to be in the, the older kids grade. But I was a grade below them uh, because I had gone through transition first grade, um, which I still don't blame because I every year I thought, OK, would I be ready for this next grade this year? Could I see myself as that age this year, like at the, as that grade? And I was like, OK, not really. Um, but by the time I got to that next year, I was fine. Um, and especially my senior year, senior year um, junior and senior year of high school. I think is when I really noticed it the most that I'm like, as a junior thinking, would I be prepared to be a senior right now? Like I was originally would have supposed to be. And I'm like, no, uh, I would not be prepared to go out into the world being about to go out to the world being my last year of high school and everything. But when I was a senior, I'm like, okay, um, and do I feel I'm ready now? And I'm like, yeah, by the time I was a senior after junior year, I did feel ready to be a senior and ready to go out and face the world as an adult. So I never regretted going to, um, I was never mad about going to transition first grade, even though it wasn't my parents' choice. They were forced to, or the school system would not let me back in. They also forced medication on me. Now that's a different story. Um, my parents were by far more upset about the medication because it costs them more. Um, because of their insurance and everything, it costs them more. They were only factory workers. Um, so it did cost them a lot more um, for my ADHD medication. But that one was was non-negotiable um, as well. My school system would not. I live in a, I come from a very small farming town in Indiana. So, um, I yeah, there wasn't many choices for schools. So... Um, so it was either you listen to them or I don't go to school or we move just for me. And it's like, that's not, that's not going to happen. So they just had to listen to the school. Unfortunately, they didn't want to, but they had to, um, no matter what medication they put me on, it never seemed to really get me under control. I'm not fully, um, not fully. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Um, I, in seventh grade is when I decided to, um, I had gone all the summer before seventh grade. Um, I had gone all summer without taking my medication and I was fine. You know, usually in the summer, my parents would let up and not worry so much about it. 
um, so I wouldn't take it as often. Um, but all of the year before seventh grade, I just st straight up never took it, period. And I was talking with my uncle on the phone, and he's like, well, why don't you try to go to school? This You're seventh grade. You're 14 now. Um, so why don't you try to go to school and start the year and see how you do since you're already waned off the medication see how you start to how you do and if you have any problems you know then go back on the medicine but if you don't then you could probably stay off of it he knows how expensive it is for my parents um so like that was actually a really good idea so i talked to my parents about it and we talked we actually didn't tell the school about it <laughs> because they didn't even know uh this is middle school, not not elementary school anymore, so they did not need to know, um, unless I started having issues. Um, but um, that was a decision between me and my parents. We did not tell the doctor. He was not involved in this, uh, this decision, but, you know, it really didn't matter because if I could do it, if I could show that I could self-control myself and not have behavioral issues, not not uh, cause problems in class, um, not get sent to the principal's office, uh, not have fights with kids or anything, and nothing, um, not throw fits or be a problem um, in class and misbehave and things. like. And if I could also, the deal with my parents, the biggest part of it was if I could keep control of myself, not be a problem in class, and also keep my grades up on my own, uh, without the medication, if I can prove that I can do it without the medication, and I can get through school and not have any issues, um, then I could, I can stay off of it. We won't put me back on it then. Um, but I've got to show it. I've got to work for it. So, um, I've got to show I can do it on my own without the medication. So I did. And seventh grade was beginning of seventh grade year. I never ended up taking medicine ever again for ADHD. Not once in my life have I been put back on medication for ADHD. I still have it very severely. Um, I'm an adult. I'm 26 now. So that was about a decade ago. Uh, um, but yeah, that um, I never got put back on it. So I, it was willpower. And it's not always necessarily easy to do that. I can't say that not everyone needs medication or no one needs medication. That is, um, it affects everyone differently. And there's so many new ones out there now that weren't available back then. Um, my, the kids in my class actually, cause everyone knew I was on it. Um, because you know, the kids in my class knew I was ADHD, um, <laughs> very obvious, uh, to everyone. Uh, so, um, they actually thought, the kids who grew up in my elementary school with me, thought that I was on an even stronger medication in seventh grade. They legit thought I was on something even stronger than before. When in actuality, seventh grade year, I wasn't on it at all. And so, yeah, so I actually calmed down more. Um, which is interesting. I'm not saying that's everyone's cases. Um, that is not always the case. Uh, so, yeah, that... Um, but that didn't uh, change the struggles. Um, even as a child, with the medication or without the medication, the struggle with academics was always there. Um, didn't matter if I had medication or not. I always struggled with academics. Not, I mean, I may pay attention a little bit better. I don't know. Um, but I don't remember. But the fact is, getting the grade isn't easy, especially if your teachers won't work with you. I was never special ed. I had never been put in special ed classes, never got special tests that were different from everyone else's, that were easier than other people's. I never had special treatment. Um, the only special treatment I ever asked for was give me a little more time on my tests and quizzes. I can't be under the same time limit as everyone else because I just, I, I won't get the grade. I can, if you give me more time, I can show you that I can get the same grade as them, but it's going to take me a little longer. Um, and we didn't really know, um, about another condition I had, um, called dyslexia. 
and I'm sure all of you have heard of it. If you haven't, then it is where essentially letters, numbers, symbols, everything, when you see things, that gets jumbled up in your mind. It affects memory greatly. Um, your memory can be wrong because it can switch things around um, and jumble things up. And you don't necessarily, like, people show it on TV. The only way you can really show it is showing, like, symbols and stuff moving around. But you don't see anything move around in real life. It just, you think this is how you see it, and that's not actually how it is. And even if you go back and see it later, like, wait a minute. I, why did I write that number down? Or wh I thought I thought for sure it said something else. Like, I, I read that word completely wrong. Um, but it's like, or I added letters to something or took away letters from something and I thought it was different and it wasn't. And, like, it can really mess with you. Um, it, for academically wise, it's a struggle. It, it makes reading, I, like, I was a good reader. Um, it just took me longer. It took me longer to read things. But... I was still a good reader, um, and I was a good writer. It just grammar I still to this day struggle with. And if you know me, I am a fan fiction writer, and I am aspiring to be a voice actor, a storyboard writer, and eventually director for cartoons and animation. Um, it's why I moved from Indiana to New York City. So um, all on my own without any family or friends, just started a new life here because I'm chasing uh, I'm pursuing, not chasing, I am pursuing the dream um, to be a director for cartoons and animation someday. I mostly, especially, m above all, just I want to be a storyboard writer. I want to be in the room where it happens. If you're a Hamilton fan, you'll get that. <laughs> you'll get that song reference. Um, but that's where I want to be, you know? So um, I, I want to be a writer for storyboarding and everything. And um, so fan fiction is a good place to get feedback on, uh, to get feedback on my writing style, my grammar, um, if I have enough detail, too little detail, um, too much detail, I'm dragging on too long with something, it's a really good place to get feedback. Um, I'm on a few writing sites, uh, fan fiction, uh, AO3, archive of our own, uh, and I'm thinking about doing Wattpad in the future, I'm not sure about that platform. Uh, but mostly on fanfiction.net, you'll see it for come up first because I've been there the longest. And then uh, Archive of Our Own, I put up only the ones that, um, my favorites, basically, the ones especially that I'm going longer with or people really like. So I put them there as well. Um, but fanfiction's where all of my work is. Um, like, all of it. Not having, like, a, if it's getting posted, it's there, f posted there first and then archive. But Archive doesn't have everything. Um, fan fiction does. But if it's on my fan fiction account, it's on my Archive account. Um, if, like, in regards to if I also put it there. Um, so you can find it in both places most of the time, depending on which story it is. Anyways, um, uh, great platforms. I, it's fanfiction.net, Archive of Our Own, AO3. You need an invitation to get into that one. Um, but it is awesome. Uh, and if you need an invitation, uh, first few people ask me, I'll give out some of mine. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyways, back to the ADHD. Um, my entire life, um, I did think, uh, I, I managed to get A's, B's, and C's, and the only time I got D's was in history, uh, mostly in, uh, senior year that was a struggle, but with, uh, government class. It was a required class for, to graduate and I struggled and I had a really good teacher who was awesome to me and gave me a lot of extra credit chances because he knew I was doing soccer, theater, choir, band, marching band, uh, um, and uh, all at once my first semester and I could not move this class to another semester while I had less going on. Um, at the time, so, like, I literally fell asleep in class and ever like, once and, like, everything, and he printed out notes for me, he, he treated me the best, and knew I wasn't special ed, but he gave me more time on things, he was amazing, incredible, Mr. Reisdorf, if you ever see this video, you're amazing, and you really, really made a difference in my life, um, and really helped me, because you're the only reason I passed government class, and the only reason he was so nice, because he had me the previous year for, uh, for history, 
uh, one of the history classes, uh, I forget, whatever junior year history was, he had me that year, and I got C's and B's. So, like, he knew I shouldn't be failing, but government is just really difficult for me, and yeah, anyways, um, it's, history is my worst subject, and then government's even worse, so it just, yeah, he really helped me out there, because he knew I was a good student, and I was trying my best, and as long as he saw my effort, he was willing to help me out, so, um, he was a great teacher, um, and I had some really good teachers, but he was probably my favorite, because he made the biggest difference grade-wise, um, because if he hadn't done that for me, and gave me extra chances, and known, and understood my circumstances, then he, I, I would have failed, and I would have had to, be held back or retake the class and not be able to take something else I wanted or needed to take and it would have just messed up my entire senior year so his efforts really did help um and I'm very thankful for it um but no I know like I never still never got special like special tests that had answers crossed off or anything um I still never got any special uh uh other than extra time and Mr. Reisdorf being awesome and printing out notes for me because there was a special ed kid in our class. So he was printing off notes for her anyways. So um, he also printed them, just made two copies for me as well um, to help me out. Um, and he'd keep up with my my ongoings, my games. He's like, oh, how was your band competition this week? And how was your soccer game last Tuesday? Um, <laughs> he kept up with me. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, anyways, um, he is the only teacher I've had that really ever gave me special notes. Um, like like special ed notes um but that was only because we ended in our kid in our class who was special ed so he just printed off two for me just to help me out um because I struggled <laughs> only in that class only in government anyways um otherwise I never did get special other than getting extra time and also being allowed to ask us extra questions and helping me out when I asked for it um when I didn't understand something um just being understanding sometimes I need to go slower um, sometimes I miss some things and I need to fill in my notes and ask more questions. And sometimes I just, you will come to the teacher and ask for a little more help. And they're always okay with that. You know, they're teachers. They're supposed, they're supposed to be. Um, I had one bad teacher that tried to flunk me out of trigonometry, even though I get straight A's in math. Um, and she hated me. Uh, that, <laughs> that's another story. Um, everyone's like, oh, it's cause she's pregnant and she's just moody. And it's like, you don't treat a student like that. Someone's asking questions, asking you to slow down, or trying to ask you questions and everything. And yeah, she made that class very difficult. And trigonometry was not actually that hard. I ended up passing with a B plus on the final exam, which she tried to fail me the entire year. Her best to fail me the entire semester. Yeah, no, that teacher was horrible. Um, and even the person who hated me most in the class, the one, the girl, one of my bullies. Um, she even said she felt bad for me because she knows that this, this teacher is mistreating me. That's sad. That's sad when the person who hates you the most, who's one of your bullies, tells you she feels sorry for you because of how this teacher is, that, that even she recognizes this teacher is not treating me right, um, in front of the entire class. Um, anyways, anyways, despite those things, those are probably the biggest dramas I ever had with teachers. Um, one fantastic, absolutely phenomenal teacher who helped me the most and then the teacher who helped me the least. Um, both senior year too. Huh? Interesting. Interesting. Um, but yeah, anyways, I did struggle a lot. Um, back to the ADHD. Um, I, other than asking for extra help uh, occasionally, um, not, not like having to go to a separate room other than to finish a test or a quiz, um, but other than that, other than asking for extra time mostly and maybe extra asking extra questions um, and making sure I like wanting to make sure my notes were right and stuff, then, you know, I never went to special ed classes or anything. I never got special tests, just extra time when they would allow it. Sometimes they would not allow it. Um, There's certain tests I was not allowed to unless I stayed past, um, stayed past school time or something. Then you know I I would not be allowed to stay and and take the rest of that test and finish it. Um, so whatever I didn't do, I didn't get done. That well, it's too bad for you. You're gonna get marked off, so for not finishing. Um, you know, which sucks because most of the time teachers will let you have that time. Not always. Um, some tests are very time sensitive and they don't want the answers getting around. So they will not let you, they, they won't give you the extra time. So 
you got fly and then that's going to hurt your grade and that sucks. So, but it does happen. And it doesn't mean it's a bad teacher unless they never do. Um, but it's certain tests and things like you have to understand from the teacher's perspective as like, especially if it's like a final exam or something um, that they can't let you leave the room until you're done. Um, like legitimately. Um, <laughs> so certain ones you really do have to um, understand the teacher um, and their perspective and the reasons um, for depending on what kind of test or quiz it is. Usually, especially for big tests, um, it's even more important because um, they don't want the answers getting out there. Um, they have to treat them the same. So it's, it's you know, um, which makes sense as long as they at least let me stay past. Um, but, you know, sometimes they can't. Um, and that just sucks for you. And yeah, but yeah, um, some teachers might give you an option for some extra credit then to make up for it, or they'll try to help you most of the time. Not all teachers, like I said, not every teacher is the same, but you know, most of the time they should, um, work with you. If you tell them, you know, Hey, I have ADHD and I have dyslexia. So it takes me longer. Things jumble up my head. It takes me longer to focus. What I did since seventh grade was I told my teachers immediately I have ADHD. So can I sit front and center of the class so I can't go looking out the window? I can't go watching what other people are doing. I can't go like, you know, doodling around because you can get my attention. I can see everything. I can hear you clearly. I have no excuse not being paying attention in class. Um, so I made sure that my teachers knew I had ADHD. The dyslexia front, um, long story short, is my senior year of high school is when I got diagnosed with dyslexia. Um, I put it as an effort towards uh, Percy Jackson. Um, my friends and me would joke around about me being a demigod because I, I did so many dyslexic-like things. Um, and then, uh, so that's when I first really got to know what dyslexia was, was Percy Jackson series. Um, and then my senior year of high school, my, uh, my senior English teacher noticed during a report, and he said he's noticed it in, in a lot of my stuff. He'd been picking up on it. Um, and then I, like, one day after a report I had to do in front of the class, you know, one of those things where you had to read your report out loud and all that. Um, uh, you know, everyone takes their turn doing it and all that. Um, but yeah, uh, he asked me, um, cause he knew I drove home from school. I had my car, so he knew I drove home. So he, and it was the last class of the day. So he's like, Hey, Nicole, can you just come over here and take this little quiz on my computer for me? I just, I'm just curious about something. And I'm like, okay. And it, of course it's a blank test. So I have no idea what this test is. I just answer the questions. That's that. <laughs> um, and then in the end, um, it basically proved I had dyslexia. And he said, I really think it's important for you to get a diagnosed with, um, because his nephew had dyslexia or has dyslexia. So he noticed it. Um, he noticed a lot of the signs and symptoms with me um, and my work and my, my grammar and everything and how I'm great at vocabulary, but grammar I struggle and, you know, like how certain areas of the class in English and senior English, like I'm really good at and other areas I'm not so great at. And yeah, um, I think he might have talked to some of the other English teachers too, because they're all in the same hallway. They all, the best friends of each other, popping into each other's classrooms during classes sometimes just to joke around. So, you know, I was like, they, he must have talked to them too, the ones that have had me. Um, and so, yeah, like, it, I mean, he might not have, but, you know, I think he just, you know, I, it made a difference um, knowing and confidence. My best friends all told me that there was such a significant difference in me after... I've got diagnosed with dyslexia because my whole life I had been told and I'd also just believed it because that's why I've been told, um, that it was all my, it was all my ADHD, that I was stupid because of my ADHD. And the fact is no one knew I had dyslexia on top of that. And, um, that really made a difference to me is when your doctor turns around and says, how on earth have you gotten through school with ADHD and dyslexia without help? Like, without special treatment, without help, and gotten, like, how did you do it? Like, I'm like, I don't know. I just tried. I mean, I did my best, and I had good teachers most of the time. 
So, you know, but just to, that really gave me confidence to know that I did all of that on my own, especially since I wasn't on medication anymore after seventh grade. So I did that on my own and that really gave the confidence to myself because I thought I was just stupid because everyone called me stupid and, you know, the, and they're like, oh, it's just your ADHD. And it's like, well, then it's all, if it was only my ADHD, then honestly, ADHD is not, it doesn't, I can't say this for everyone because I'm just one person and everyone has their own unique stories, individual stories that are not mine. Um, but for me, knowing that I had the dyslexia too just made such a difference for me and my confidence because I thought it was just my ADHD I was fighting. I didn't know I was fighting two different, different mental disorders or is it called a disorder? That's a good question. Look that up. Um, I can't because I'm recording on my phone. So, um, but uh, it is, um, they are, I mean, for lack of better word, disorders. ADHD is a disorder. Um, dyslexia, I'm not sure if it's considered a disorder, but it, it does need to be diagnosed. Um, it, it has some special term. It might be a disorder and there, or there isn't another term for it. And that is the term and I'm right. Or I could be wrong, and there is a different term for it. Um, I, I, you've got me. Um, I don't really know. Um, uh, so don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, they. Uh, is it raining outside? Sorry, this is ADHD. Is the best at the best. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Is it raining outside? Since I've stopped. Also, have you noticed, short hair. Um, I have not made an actual video of my face since last October, um, since before last off, since Halloween basically. And I, I, I got my first haircut um, this short um, back in Halloween. So uh, yeah, so I have not had really a video with my face, I don't think on YouTube or anywhere. Um, Except for the one Instagram picture, and that's like it. <laughs> um, all Facebook, I've had some medical posts that I've done. Um, but otherwise, my short hair. Um, I just got it trimmed recently, too. So back to, I like, had another inch taken off. Not another inch, but like it had grown out like an inch since October. So we, we took an inch jack off, keeping out my collarbone. Uh, ADHD is its best. <laughs> Distractions. Um, so good at just like, oh, squirrel. Shiny things. Ooh, sparkles. <laughs> it was so easy for me. Um, anyways, back to on track, if you're even still with me at this point. Um, back on track. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh. Um... Dyslexia and ADHD. Um, but that doesn't stop me from wanting to be a writer. And it doesn't stop me from wanting to be um, the dreams I, I have. Because um, I have two things working against me mentally. and But it doesn't um, mean I can't do it. It does not uh, deter me. It just means I have to work a little bit harder. And that's also what editors are for. And people double checking your work, triple checking your work. That's why you have another pair of eyes at work like there's never just oh I wrote this it's going on screen like there's other people who will check over your work and stuff to make sure it's accurate and and consistent and all of that so like there's a team of people for a reason um so and even in writing in general like for books or anything um you know you always have editors and stuff so like even the best people need an editor so like need another set of eyes to look over their work so to help out you know um, it's human, you know, you make mistakes. I just make more of them. <laughs> I just make a lot more of them. That's all. That's the only difference. Um, but, um, so yeah, uh, that will never deter me from that though. Um, so how ADHD, I, I do have this stuff like written down on a paper. <laughs> so I, I have some kind of form of direction here. Otherwise I really would go off on whole rants and you have if you think I haven't yet, uh, if you think I already have, there's nothing compared to what I normally do in a conversation, where especially when it's just me talking about something on and on. I can have three or four hour conversations. My friends say it's an art that I've perfected of like just 
changing topics or branching on to different things. And I don't even remember where I was, man, what started it, where I started or anything. And I was like, wait, where did I, wh where was I going with that? I don't remember. Where did I start with? Why did I start talking about that? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, anyways, how ADHD and we're, you know, dyslexia too, but ADHD more so, um, still affects me and still part of my life. Um, I, I'm a 26 year old. I'm about to be 27 in April. Uh, so my birthday is coming up in a couple months, um, like two months, two or three months, however you want to count that. We just started February. So, um, but, um, it still affects me as an adult. Um, ADHD very much defines who I am. It always will. It always has. Um, uh, it will affect, define who I am, my energy, my, uh, personality. So much of my personality comes from my ADHD because I'm a I'm just usually energetic and excitable and, and like, I know I might be a little dreary in this one, um, but, uh, and sometimes I just kind of drag on, but I'm like, you know, in general, when people meet me, especially all my friends, cause I'm an extreme extrovert and all my best friends are all introverts. All the closest people to me are introverts. And like, I, every single one of them has a story about how I scared them like crazy when they first met me because or at least made them nervous because I'm such an extrovert. Like, hi, how are you? Like, da, 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 da. And they're just like, hi. H why are you talking to me? Yeah. So that's how most of my uh, I met most of my friends and majority of the reactions to me. Um, yeah, I have lots of funny stories about that. We're not going to that now, though, because we don't have time. We're at 30 minutes. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, ADHD is still very much a part of me. It is always defined who I am. Um, been a huge factor of who I am. And it continue, will co always continue to be. I am proud of my ADHD. Um, I know it, it affects me and makes things a little bit harder for me sometimes. And at work, um, unfortunately, for other reasons, um, from being bullied as a child and my social interactions, not understanding. And that's actually pretty common with ADHD. Not necessarily bullying. I mean, that is that might be common. Um, but... Uh, the social interactions and that actually usually leads to bullying um because we're not good people of ADHD are not just naturally not very good um not all of us never saying everyone um i just know like from what i know it is common that we're just social interactions and understanding how to behave in social situations it's difficult for a lot of ADHD people not everyone but a lot of us um, so we, it, it is difficult to pick up on social cues. We take longer and it takes a lot more practice for us. Um, I'm still working on, um, because I finally have someone in my life, um, my best friend currently here and, and, um, that I live with, she's my roommate too, for the past three years here in New York City. Um, I've been living with her and she's just helped me so much with working on understanding when to talk in a group conversation, when not to talk, even when it's just two people, you and someone else, um, when I'm bulldozing her, like when she's not done with her, what she was saying, and I just start talking and going on something, and I'm talking over her, and I don't realize it, and I, I'm completely unaware. Um, and um, how that also affects me at my jobs, at my workplaces, um, and how that just makes sometimes they have to repeat, like I do need to be repeated to, um, from my employers or, you know, my, my bosses or the higher ups and like, can you run that by me one more time? Can you show me how to do it? Um, if there's something on the device, like, like, Hey, can you show me how to use the app again? Um, on the device so that way I can do my job, like I can do the audits, I can do the polls, I can do whatever I need to do um, with the device, you know, um, or look up, you know, how, how do I look up what other stores have so I can help this person, um, like different things, you know, devices, I worked at Target for three years, um, I actually just left, by the way, congratulations for me, I just left Target, um, I've been there since I moved here basically, I've been working there and, uh, I finally left um, in, in January, so I finally put my two weeks notice in and left on my terms and uh, on, on a good note, but it was a 
about time I got out there. I've wanted out there for so long. Um, but I had, I had no choice. I had to stay and put up with all the bullshit that I had to put up with. Um, they helped me when it really mattered. Um, but like, there was a lot of other bullshit still. It's, it's a retail job. What do you expect? Like, literally, you're the bottom of the chain here. Um, <laughs> so I, I needed it though. So I, I held it. So, um, but yeah, uh, congratulations for me. I um, finally left. I am much happier at American Dream, um, which I guess if you want to know more about American Dream, either look it up, third biggest mall in the USA, and also for having Nickelodeon Universe theme park that's indoors, uh, DreamWorks water park that's also indoors, so it's all year long, ice skating, everything's indoors. So ice skating, the snow slopes, uh, an aquarium, we got two different mini golfs, uh, and a mirror maze and other things like, yeah, not just the third biggest mall in USA. It's literally so much more than that. So it is amazing, incredible. Look it up. Um, or you can ask me questions too, because I worked there since last August. So, um, I'm happy to tell you all about it. It's really cool. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, if you want me to tell you how I got the job and all that, you know, you can just ask me in the comments down below. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'm very happy there and I'm going places there. It's a very much more creative place and I'm a birthday party host currently. Um, but my supervisors are looking to, uh, put me into higher positions soon. Um, I have had a couple talks, a couple supervisors have talked to me about, um, growing opportunities for me here because they like me and I'm a good worker and they see the leadership skills in me. So, um, I am moving up. So pretty soon I should be moving up. I'll have more information about that when it happens. I don't want to start any and spread anything. I'm like, wow. So yeah. Um, but yeah, they, uh, a lot of good things happening for me in that regard. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited, um, and I'm very much happy, much happier there than I ever was at Target, um, and then also just in general in life, uh, things are getting better for me, and it, working with Nickelodeon and DreamWorks Studios, um, even if it's, uh, just the birthday parties and stuff, um, does put me a bit on a higher note of knowing when some of their openings for the actual studios start opening. It circulates around the building, so, you know, you hear about some opportunities in writing and stuff, so, um, we see a lot of famous people, too, so. I'm not saying I'm gonna get my hit sick from famous people, because our job is to treat them like normal people, but, you know, make sure there's security, because, you know, they... You know, anyways, that's a whole, you know, how famous people, they come somewhere, they want to actually enjoy their time and not be mobbed by fans all the time. So, um, there are concerts and cool events and stuff like that happening all the time. I work those too. I do work those events too. Um, but you can't fangirl or anything. Like, even if you see them, like, you can't take pictures and stuff and things because it's like, well, we're professionals here. This is our job and we're professionals and we just want to be, um, especially if it's not a concert where they just... Like, but you never ask for an autograph no matter what. It doesn't matter, concert or not. You do not ask for an autograph or anything. You just say, what do you need? What can I get you? Um, that's it. You you don't, no fangirling. We are professionals. That is just a part of our job in American Dream. We, we do not fangirl. Um, we just make sure everything goes the way it's supposed to go. Um, if it's a, if it's just private for them or if it's an event, things are going well. If it's a private thing for them, they don't want other people to know they're here. Um, and they just want to enjoy their day at the water park or theme park or wherever, um, that, you know, we make sure they are able to enjoy their day. Um, you know, just being a normal person because a lot of famous people sometimes just want to settle down and be a nobody. Um, so they can just enjoy their day without having all that craziness um, of pap paparazzi and everything, which is understandable. So, um, anyways, like I said, I can go on to this whole other rants, um, <laughs> the whole other thing. Um, uh, ADHD, how it affects me as an adult. I am, and we're getting 40 minutes, oh my god. Uh, um, it is always going to be a struggle. It is always going to be something I have to work on. I, I have to work with. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm not proud of it. Um, I am proud to say I'm an ADHD person. Um, 
because it's just so much of a part of who I am. And if I wasn't proud of that, then, you know, and how it sets me apart, because I can see things differently because of that. I, I, I adhere to my my creativity, everything I love in my life and things and part of my personality that people love the most is from my ADHD and not always when I stumble, you know, I talk over them and things is not so great, but, but you know, other parts, <laughs> other parts where it's not so bad. So yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to it, you know, just like there is for anything and everyone and everywhere it's in life, you know, but um, I'm happy to work with it because it's just such a big part of who I am. And I'm so proud of what I've accomplished in my life. Um, and despite the struggle and despite how hard it's been. Um, and I'm not even talking about stuff that relates to the ADHD, just life in general. Hit by a car, found my dad dead, um, both parents having cancer, and then finding my dad dead. And then it happened after. But, um, you know, different things, horrible things that have happened in my life, you know, um, I am proud of who I am and who I am today, and I look forward to discovering more about myself as I get older and as my journey continues and my life, uh, my life, life stories continues to be written. Um, so I am, uh, mostly this video was for wrapping up now, mostly this video was for encouraging, most people probably didn't even get this far in the video. <laughs> Um, because I talk so much, and they're like, 40 minutes? No way. I'm not going to listen to her. Nah. <laughs> Most likely. Because that's probably what I would be in anyone's video, unless I really cared about the topic. Um, but I might even fast forward. I will recommend, I'll probably just do a little snippet of something like, hey, fast forward in the beginning of this video. Um, because it'll just make things easier. Um, I'll probably put that in the description, probably. Um. Uh, or like do a fast run so you hear me talk faster because I, I do kind of talk slower um, sometimes and sometimes not at very different speeds. Um, there is no in between with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, this is this video is just to talk about because um, I've been watching the Holderman family and their videos about ADHD and the dad, um, and how many cool videos he makes about his ADHD and how to handle it and things. And his videos are so awesome. Um, you should go look them up. Uh, the ADHD song should pop right up. Um, so, uh, it's like, uh, under the sea. Um, it's a, like an Ariel Little Mermaid song that he does a parody of an ADHD song. He has a couple of them, but the Little Mermaid one is my favorite. Um, the parody uh, song for ADHD that he does, so it was really fun, really awesome, um, because he's so outspoken, it really inspired me, not that I've never wanted to do, do the video like this, but it really inspired me to do a video, um, so, um, here it is, um, I think I will continue to do little videos like this, <laughs> little, people are like, little, it's 42 minutes now, 43 minutes now, what are you talking about, little? That's not happening. Your videos aren't little. That's not, that's a lie. That is not true. <laughs> I don't know how to do short little videos. I'm so bad at them. You know any of my stuff, the way I talk. <laughs> it's so bad for me. It's hard. Um, so is like I said, ADHD, I talk a lot. It is a struggle. Um, so <laughs> imagine how much longer this would be if I didn't have a list. <laughs> To keep me somewhat on track. Um, oh my god, I don't want to imagine or know how long it'd be like a two hour video. I'd be like, what? It's almost an hour as it is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> me making fun of myself, it's normal. Uh, but um, yeah, um, so this video is really just because I want to talk about my ADHD and say how special all of us are who have it, and even if the different things that people have on the spectrum. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about my ADHD, my experience in my life with it, and how, you know, growing up, how it's affected me and how it's even affected me just now, um, in my life currently at 26 year old, 26, almost 27 year, years old. So I just wanted to give encouragement. Most of you probably didn't even make it to this part of the video because it's so far down. But, um, but you know, I wanted to be encouraging and, and let you guys know, hey, there is hope. Um, 
it doesn't mean life is hopeless. Obviously, millions of people live with ADHD and do incredible things with their lives. So um, I didn't spell numbers because I, I can't remember numbers. So uh, it's just like, no, I, I know a lot. And like, that's about as much as you're going to like, look it up. You, you can do the research too. Um, uh, but yeah, um, me and numbers don't mix. So <laughs> you know, math's my best subject other than music. <laughs> Math and music are my best subjects, and me and numbers don't always get along. Um, mental math is where I struggle. Anyways, uh, anyways, wrapping the video. We're not talking about math. Uh, oh, the struggles. Okay, focus, Nicole. Um, um, yeah. So this is the end of the video. We're not gonna hit for fifty minutes. Forty-five is enough. Um. Tell me your guys' thoughts are below if you even got this far. Um, if you cared to watch this far, I mean, I probably wouldn't have if I didn't actually know the person on the other side of the camera. So um, I totally understand that. I get it. Um, my attention span does not last this long, typically. Uh, or unless I'm like legit interested in what they're saying and they have other cool special effects that I'm not doing. I'm just posting this straight up. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, yeah. ADHD rocks. Um, we are all awesome and special and unique in our own way. And I will see you guys next video um hopefully if you want me to um even if you don't i might do it anyways um with a uh another video about um talking about my adhd maybe my depression um and my anxiety panic attacks like i have so many things it's fun or my dyslexia like i have so many things it's it's great or if you want me talking about my ibs or my ibd my struggles with that in life and those diseases or my pcos or my acid reflux disease or i have lots of fun things that are wrong with me so <laughs> I have lots of fun medical things. It's a blast. Um, so, um, so much to talk about. So many topics I can talk about, but I know most people don't care for what I have to say. So, um, so it's like, eh. do I really think people want that? Or do I have time? A lot of times I just forget to ever do anything with it um, or have no inspiration for it. So it just depends. Um, but if someone asks me 100%, I'll do it. Um, uh, to talk about that if they care enough to hear what I have to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is Sailor Lioka for life. Sailor Lioka for life. Shorter hair. Oh my gosh. Shorter hair. Oh. If people who know me know I love long hair, so this is such a big drastic change for me to have short hair. Um, uh, but yeah, so Sailor Lioka for life. New and improved. Um, signing off. See you next video. We are not going to hit 50 minutes in this video. Bye! Cue song! No, 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 no song. <laughs>